Hey guys, I'm sure you have seen a million tutorials online already on how to make um, all these cloth face masks that now they say we should be wearing out in public. Um, I tried a few different patterns and I couldn't find any that like really felt like it fit well. Um, so I actually made my own putting together a couple different patterns and some tricks that I, I saw in other videos and so I just wanted to share that with you. So this is the final mask that I came up with. So it's shaped, um, it's got ties instead of elastic because nobody has elastic now. Um, there's a pocket in the back to add a filter if you want to add a filter or just any other, another layer of protection. Um, and I can go ahead and show you what that looks like when it's on. So, as you can see, it fits really well across the whole face. There's not a whole lot of gaps going on here. And it's pretty comfortable. Um, so this is a pattern that was adapted by um, Sew More. I think that's who did it. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link to it because um, I used her template for the main part of the face and I, I improvised the pocket, but I can show you what I did and I improvised the straps. Um, here's actually what it looks like uh, from the original pattern. This is Aubrey's size, um, but again, I added the pocket on it. But it has elastic loops for the ears, which didn't work very well for a four-year-old. Um, they kind of slide off. And then I found too that these sides, um, they kind of were open and big on the face, especially for Sean's. So um, we found out if we put a little pleat in them, uh, like this one here, that it actually hugs your face and shapes your face a little bit better and gets this part under your chin. So uh, I did that with Ben with still elastic. Um, I actually cut this elastic out of their old pajama bottoms. So this goes over the top of the head um, and then around the back. Um, but now I'm out of elastic. So I made this pattern with the straps um, and I can show you how I did it. Okay, so here's the mask here. And the template I use is actually by um, So Much More. Uh, it's a PDF online and she's got a great YouTube tutorial that goes with it. Um, this was really, really helpful. I don't want to take credit for the, the shape of the mask because that um, this is her pattern. But um, there was just a couple things that I added or changed to it and that's why I'm going to show you what I did. Um, so when you download the PDF, it's got these template pages here. Um, so I printed them and cut them out. Uh, this one says Ben. Ben and Aubrey wear the same size, and I'm going to sew one for Aubrey now for you. Um, so you can see, but I just want to show you, I added um, these two straight lines here. And those two straight lines are um, for cutting the backing fabric to accommodate for this pocket. Um, I have my pocket over on the side. The very first prototype that I did, where did I put, here we go. I had the pocket across the whole back, um, which really is, is convenient because then you can just lift it open. Um, the only downside was that then I had to cut four pieces of fabric, um, so I was sewing another seam, um, whereas putting it on the side, I only have to cut one, two, three pieces of backing fabric. So um, I just went ahead and put it over there. All right, so on this pattern, um, it says to cut two for the exterior fabric, so the, the front part of your face mask. So I did that for Aubrey here, are my two pieces, and they need to be um, mirror images of each other. So I just fold my fabric in half uh, and cut them at the same time, so you get the, the mirror image here. And then um, for the backing, you're going to cut um, one more of the normal size, and then to get um, the middle section, so this piece of fabric right here, you're going to cut for this line. So from here to this line here. Um, 
and that gets you a piece like this. So it's just a little bit smaller than that piece. And then to get the very end, you're gonna cut from here to the edge um, and it will get you a piece like this and that goes on here. So here's the back of your mask and here's the front of your mask. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, which is because I like my edges to all be finished, is I'm going to um, take this piece and I'm gonna fold over this edge and then I'm gonna fold it over um, one more time and then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this down. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this piece. The seam's gonna be on this side, so I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna fold it one more time and go ahead and sew that down. So I'm gonna do that now real quick. Okay, so here we are. Um, I have them folded over um, and a nice seam sewn down and this one, um, it's got an ear left on it so we can go ahead and um, cut that off, get that out of here. Okay, so now when we look at it, this is the right side of the back. We'll have um, this top flap over the back and now they're ready to sew. So now we're going to put um, the two halves together for the front and the back. So with right sides together, we are gonna sew along um, this curved this this curved edge here. And I have about a quarter inch seam allowance um, to do that. And we're gonna do with the same with the front here. We're gonna put right sides together and sew a quarter of an inch around this large curve. Okay, once you have that curve um, sewn together, I do like to just put a couple little snips in this curve. I did find that it helped the mask open up a little bit better. Um, I only need a couple. Um, and then we're gonna finger press those seams open. You just wanna be careful not to snip your thread there. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. If I can get it, okay, there we go. There we go. Um, and I do wanna mention, I do have a really tight um, stitch count on here, so it's not very loose. It's it's pretty tight, so you're not gonna get any, any gaps. We're gonna do the same for this one. Go ahead and open it up. Finger press open the seam. And our next step is going to be to put um, the front and the back together now. So as you can see, uh, when you pop this out, here's the front of your mask. So we're gonna put um, the right sides together. So this is the right side for the back. Here's the right side for the front. And I like to start up, um, actually when I sew it, I sew it looking at the backing, so I like it to be pushed uh, this way. So I like to line it up at the top here first. there, put a pin, 
And now is when we'll add this flap. And I'm just gonna put it right on top because I want the, the middle part to be the part in the front. So we're just gonna lay this right on top here. And then when I pin this one in place, I like to make sure I go through um, both of these layers just to really sh make sure that I hold it in place. So we're gonna pin it right here. And right here. Um, make sure that our bottom seam is all lined up. And I'm gonna start over here in this corner just so I can get um, these pieces stitched down right at the beginning. And I'm gonna do um, a quarter inch all the way around the entire mask. We don't need to leave um, a hole to turn it out because we've got the pocket here. Um, so just a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, now that we have a quarter inch all the way around the mask, we can go ahead and turn it out. Oh, actually, before we turn it out, we're gonna um, snip off all these corners. And I like to snip off um, just a little bit right right here where that seam is just to get rid of some of the, the bulk. Sorry guys, I can't see very well through the camera. ears off the top and then we're going to put um, a couple of snips in this long curve here um, just to kind of give it a little bit of, of ease so it um, can curve around our face a little bit better okay now now we can turn it inside out um, so if you've got something to help push out the corners, that's great. I just have my little pencil here. Make sure the lead isn't out. There we go. All right. And we'll take this pencil and we'll poke out the corners here. I just like to go along the seams too and make sure that it's all laying nice and flat. This far corner. And up. Uh, make sure that this top gets pushed out. There we go. There we go. So now we've got the um, the shape of our face mask, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the iron and press uh, my seams so that they're really nice and crisp all the way around. Okay. And now when we have that seam nice and pressed, we are going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the top of the mask and from the bottom of the mask. I'm not going to worry about the sides because the side is going to be covered up with um, our binding. So I'm just going to go across the top and the bottom and the purpose of that stitch is really just to hold this this fold in place and make sure it stays nice and, and crisp and doesn't bubble out. Okay so once we sew those seams um, this is what we're left with. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to be adding on our binding straps. So the original pattern calls for elastic, but nobody seems to have elastic anymore. And um, a lot of people say that it hurts their ears um, and the straps are adjustable. So those are preferred. So I'm new to binding uh, strips and binding ties. I didn't have any binding tape, whatever it's called. I didn't have any on hand, so I had to make my own. Um, I have never done that before, but I found a really cool trick online. And if you don't have any and you don't know how to make any, I can um, show you how that was done when we're done making this mess. Um, but here's what the binding tape that I have looks like. Um, I had a jelly roll, a Kona cotton fabric jelly roll. I have all these uh, beautiful two and a half inch wide strips. Um, and a lot of patterns I saw said to cut the um, cut two inch strips and that left uh, an inch left over. So I just went ahead and cut these in half and that way with one jelly roll strip, I was able to get both of my straps for the, for the mask. So they are, I think it's like an inch and a quarter an inch and a quarter by um, 36 inches long. So first thing we need to do is we need to find the center. So I'm gonna fold that in half and make a little crease here. I'm gonna lay that down. And now um, when we first made these masks, we just left them like this, but then we found that the sides Oh, we're kind of gaping and it didn't really hug our chin right so we went ahead and we've been adding a pleat in so I'm just gonna put a little pleat right in the middle here and do it from the back right in the middle and I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in just to really hold it in place and then I'm gonna pull up my other side and try to um, try to match that pleat so we have the, it's the same on both sides. So we're gonna make this, there we go. Nice and straight here. So I just want to know if you want to make a version of this without a pocket, um, when you make the back, you would sew the two back pieces together, sew the two front pieces together, and then you only have to do a seam across the top and the bottom, and you can leave the edges raw because these edges are going to be hidden inside of our binding tape here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add add this on now. So I've got the center of my tape here and I'm going to put this right in the middle. And see I left my pin here so I can go ahead and take this out and we're going to fold this over. Now I like to fold it on the top and make sure that those edges are exactly the same length and really pushed in there and then I'm going to go ahead and clamp that top down and then I'm going to do the same for the bottom make sure that this is the same even length here and clamp that down and then the middle should just fall uh, perfectly in place then it should be nice and centered um, and just to make sure that it's not farther on one side than the other, I like to go straight up and down and stick a pin in right there. And yep, it comes out right, right on the line. So we've got it perfectly centered on there. Um, and then we're gonna go up to the top. Now, you can just leave the, the top open uh, and raw like that, especially it's it's much faster. But if you want it to be um, really finished looking, you can flip this, open up your tape, flip this over, finger press it, and then I cut these little 
corners off to get rid of the, the bulk. And then we fold it down and it should want to just go right back into place. See, so we got tucked over, and then we're just gonna fold this in half. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip that in place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing um, for the bottom. Um, I don't, I don't have a way to have my camera up really well to be able to see the sewing machine. Maybe I can try, because it can be a little hard to get this started because it's so small under the machine. Um, but I usually start right here and I stitch forward and I stitch back. And then we're gonna stitch really, really close to, to this edge uh, to hold the tape down. And we're just, um, you're gonna keep folding it in half as you, as you go down and sew until you get to this part of the mask and then all the way to the end again. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn this in and uh, sew, sew my strip. Oh, and when we get to the mask area, I usually sew down and then I backstitch here. I backstitch on the pleat and I backstitch here on the bottom just to really make sure that um, it's snug with all the, the pulling that goes on, um, that it really stays secure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sew this strip on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to, to show this part. Um, I'm afraid my hands are just gonna be in the way if I come this way. Um, and I do not try to claim, <laughs> I, I do not claim to be a seamstress. Um, I am just, experimenting like I said I'm completely new to binding tape I've never done this before um, now my little grip and this is so short and and it doesn't really come out the other end that when I do this um, it, it'll just sew in place it won't really advance it on so I like to have another strip of fabric right here to kind of sew it right up next to to help pull it um, and the other thing I do is the little um, the lift here I like to hold it up just a hair so that the, the feet have a better chance of sliding it down. So um, the first stitch, I go ahead and, and manually lower the needle in. I'm gonna lift up that foot just the tiniest bit and go ahead and sew a couple stitches. Yeah, see, it just kind of gets caught. Now I'm gonna go backwards. Now, I am able to go this way. So we just want to make sure that it's folded exactly in half. Uh, it's nice and even on both sides. And I'm really going uh, right up to the edge with my stitches here, just so it doesn't open back up on me. Uh, and this is where, I'm sure this is the cheater's way of doing things. Um, I like to hold it up just again for this little part and I like to, to be able to, to kind of guide it through here uh, with this piece of fabric. Just to get it started. Yeah, see, it's just sewing in place. This is the hardest part, you guys, I promise. <laughs> so if you're good at this, then, then this is very easy. There we go. Okay. This is out of my way. All right, now we can go down the...
is where we're coming up where the mask meets the straps meet the body. So if we take that clip off, this clip off, go forward, back stitch. I just do it once. And then the same. Same thing over the pleat here. Okay, so here's what it looks like um, with it all sewn on. <clears throat> see, so you can see that it's sewn pretty close to the, the very edge here. Um, and you can see this spore went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to really um, secure the straps on in case there's a lot of wear and tear. So now I'm gonna take my second binding tape here and I'm gonna repeat the exact same process on the other side where we fold it in half, find the middle. Um, I like to line up on the back um, so I can, because usually my, my stitches contrast and I can see it really well. But of course you can go any way you like. And again, I just make sure that it's really lined up in ha perfectly in half on this corner. And then make sure that it's perfectly folded in half on, on this corner. And then the middle should just fall into place from there. But like I said, I like to put a pin straight down. Yep, uh, just to make sure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this strap on and then we should be done. Okay, and here is the final mask. Um, so it goes up real nice over the nose. It's got our pocket for our filter and we can tie it up over um, the top of the head and behind the neck so it can be adjusted um, to really fit your face the best way. Um, for girls especially though, <laughs> um, it helps to have a ponytail in to tie this up over the ponytail or to have a hat or a beanie on. Um, but there you go. There's our finished face mask.